Good morning. I'm here to greet you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I have a 10 minute video that I hope you uh, put your own divided attention to it because in my thinking, I think it's very important uh, to reveal to you and to make you aware about certain things that you might not be aware of. Primarily, it's things that I've written in the Bible that you might not read or I just want to give you a reminder, but please give me your own divided attention for 10 minutes. That's all, that's all this video is going to be, just 10 minutes. But I want you to listen with your heart what I'm about to give you as a friend. Yes. Because I don't want you to go through, or anyone, Hallelujah. the things that I went through as a sinner, things that I'm ashamed of, uh, and no one warned me, no one told me, don't do this because this and this and that. But once I find you sure, I still carry that shame. It doesn't go away. But I don't want you to go through that. I want you to repent and listen to the words that are about to read to you because they're, they're true. I had lived them. And I want you to save you from that tragedy. So here you go. I'm coming to you from the book of Revelations, chapter 21, the New Jerusalem, verse 5 through 8, I think. And then from uh, 21 to 27. Okay? Give me a chance to recuperate. Here we go. Kansas City. It hurts me. It hurts me. What's going on? Who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he write, then he said, Write this down, for this word are trustworthy and true. Verse 6. He said to me, It is this it is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give him drink without cost. From the spring of water of life, he who overcomes will inherit all this. I'll be God, I'll be his God, and he'll be my son. Thank you, Lord. He made me his son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A sinner, you know, a worthless, dirty, filthy sinner. I'm his son. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> He made me his son. <laughs> and he will do the same to you. He's no respectable person. He'll love you just like he loves me. Yes. <laughs> He's a loving God. He's not yet to punish you, to beat you, or to smack you, or anything Amen. like that. He's, He's here to help you, to give. He wants to give. Give, give, give everything. He was nothing. You know, asking you to make sacrifices and to jump hurdles and do calisthenics. All he wants you to love him, to love him. And you can't help it. Once you open your door and your heart to let him in, that's all you're going to get is love, love, love. That's all he has to give you. Praise your Lord. Should I, let me continue with this before I complete the breakdown. Because I love it so much. He overcome and it, oh he'll God be his God will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbeliever, the vile, the murderer, the sexuality immoral and the liars, their place will be in the fiery lake. Do you wanna go to a fire a lake? Do you want to go to the fire lake? I don't recommend it. I do not recommend it because I had Amen. read books about people that had been there. There's a story in the Bible of a man that wanted someone to give him a, to touch, a touch of water in his lips because he was going on. Hallelujah. And there are testimonies about the things that's happening here to us, to the unbelievers and those that don't live in 
and the um, and the Christian style of living because it's a, it's a it's a constant thing. It's a lifestyle. It isn't something you pick up and put down. It's not a shoe or a hat or anything like that. You got to live with it permanently. And it's easy. It's not hard. I live I live in the in the inner world and. I had to make changes, but it wasn't so hard. It wasn't so hard. So now I'm glad I don't have to drink anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't have to night clothes anymore because I don't need them anymore. There's that anxiety or that place to be in those places, it no longer exists. It's gone. I no longer desire to have a bottle of cognac from France or a bottle of champagne for breakfast in the morning. I no longer need that stuff. It's, it's gone, you know, it's simple life, everyday simple life of worship and praise the Lord. And, and I'm not here to talk to you, it's a miracle that I'm here talking to you, okay? Because I literally, literally die in an emergency room with a major heart attack. But he brought me back and I'm here to to tell you these things so you might prosper from it. So you give up certain types of life. So you accept Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. It doesn't cost you anything. It's how to save you money. Because I no longer had to pay $50 for a bottle of cognac. So <laughs> I lived there, yes. It's a Spanish room that I used to love. And it cost me 50 bucks to buy it. You're laughing, but it's the truth. So now I have that money and I get myself a meal. Take my wife to dinner. Amen. Uh, or any of you guys want to take me up and that, I'd be glad to do it. Because I no longer have to buy that liquor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to end that here on this, on the chapter, on the uh, verse 8. I'm going to go down to verse 22. And... Uh, So this is about the New Jerusalem, what the city is like. Uh, you could go to Revelation chapter 20, uh, 21 and 22, and it reveals to you what uh, the New Jerusalem is going to be and what heaven is like. Okay, so. And, and I did not see a temple, a city, because the Lord Almighty and the Lamb are its, its temple. The city does not need the sun the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives a light, and the Lamb is its lamp, the Lamb and Lamb. The nations will walk by its lights, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor to it. On one day, its gate will be shut. This is where you want to be, you want to be in the inside of that gate. But there will be no, no night no night there, for the glory and honor of the nation will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does that is shameful or deceitful, but only those who have names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that will only happen, my friend, if you become born again. Other than that, you can forget about it, because your money, your good deeds, and Everything you had done would be useless. Forgive me, excuse me, man. I don't know if this is running. Yeah, I break down every time I read the, uh, <clears throat> I read the Bible because it reminds me where I was, where I'm at now. And I see other people, my friends, and people in a ferry. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little cold. <coughs> and the moors walking like zombies, everything is la 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 la, looking for the air. And they don't know what's at stake. And we need the church and you that are saved, you need to reach out and talk to these people, give them the good news. Or you'd simply say good morning, but mean it. People will know, okay? And oh, thank you, you're so great. Thank you very much.
That was good, Linda. Thank you. So, it's up to us. The church, the church can only do so much. Yes. But you as an individual, you can touch different people. Wherever you go, when you go to the grocery store, uh, even you go to a movie, you go to the uh, mall or to a shopping center, be yourself. Let them know that you're a Christian. Okay, you see somebody that needs help with a package, can I help you? I was to the doctor the last week I went to the, I was to the doctor's office, and uh, a Muslim family walked in. But the problem is, there's only one chair left. And I was sitting on that chair. So I got up, and I let that lady have the chair. She was so grateful. She was so grateful. She was, and uh, I let her know, you know, that I'm a Christian. I let her know I'm a Christian, you know. So she knew, because, you know, See, I don't, pro I don't, pro I project Yeshua Hamashiach. You see, people know what's in your heart. You, you project it as you walk through, but you project gentleness, kindness, that you're willing to help. People will notice. They will notice it because I have proven it. I, have, if I walk around angry, and with bad thoughts in my mind, people will see it, people will walk away. I approach people and everyone goes this way. But if I walk, it's true. Now, if I walk, see, you attract what you're thinking, what's in your mind, you attract it. If you attract desperation, that's what you're gonna attract. If you walk where you have peace in your heart and peace in your mind, and you're always looking to help someone, that's what you're gonna project. And people, people have a radar. I know about a radar because I was in the military. And if I was sleeping and you all touched my door, I was instantly awake and ready to act. So this has dissipated but some time, but my wife, I first heard because sometimes she walked in very gently not to walk me up. And my radar will come on, I'm ready to step, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> well, that's what happens in the military. That's what, you gotta be ready instantly. Instantly to defend whatever. When you're sleeping, you're awake. That's the thing that, uh, that happens to you in the military because it's embedded into you. It's embedded into you. And sometimes it goes away very easily, sometimes it doesn't. So people will know what's in your heart, what's in your mind. So be careful what you're thinking about. Be careful what you say. See this here? The life and death, that's in it to be your tongue. So be careful what you say. And it takes time. I used to curl like a sailor, but gently, they, you know, little by little, it's not the right thing to say. So I wish you the best. Have a great Thanksgiving, you and your family. And we in this congregation love you. And I hope you come and see us soon, because we love you. We'll make you feel at home when you come. God bless.